Math is the subject we all love to hate, but what if it was easier to understand? Behind every subject, there is history and reason behind its existence. Or not, it's your own decision. I can't call you out for your own sentience, assuming you are sentient. <laughs> In my mind, I split the reason or history into the how and the why. Most people looking up math tutorials want the how, but could care less about the why. So this video goes over the simplest form of math, math operations. Counting, adding, subtracting, multiplication, and division. Hopefully your understanding of math may deepen or you'll learn why we do what we do in math. I have certainly learned a lot through learning why we learn or get taught what we do. I would like to preface this video that I am no professor or math expert, but I am a simple sentient student with an appreciation of math. This video is a simple why behind math operations, which almost everyone can understand without any prior knowledge. To begin, what is math? Math's definition on Google is, the abstract science of number, quantity, and space. Mathematics may be studied in its own right, pure mathematics, or as it's applied to other disciplines such as physics and engineering, applied mathematics. Applied mathematics is something every student is interested in when asking the question, when would I ever use this? Pure math is math that has no real application until we apply real world ideas. Pure math could be arithmetic, which is most like our basic operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, but with the added exponent and extraction of roots, or the idea of a square root. But I am getting ahead of myself. Math, in my opinion, in its purest form, is the manipulation of numbers. Math begins with the idea of the number one, representing a thing, or the lowest cardinal number, which represents a quantity, hence why zero was invited to the party. The idea of one led to two, which is all we had for a while until the Sumerian, Babylonian, and Egyptian cultures needed more numbers to represent their crop loads, weights, and quantities of things. It got tiring saying there are many twos referring to ten. The system started around the 4th millennium, 4000 BCE, and were changed globally to the 10 base system in the 7th century, 700 BCE, in India. The 10 base system was first thought to be in Egypt around 2700 BCE, but it was used more nationally. The number zero was also introduced by an Indian or Mayan mathematician, depending on the idea of nothing or a placeholder being first used in either culture. I simply do not know. The number zero would forever change math with the idea of nothing, but this happens later, so back to operations. Now imagine we are back in Egypt in 2000 BCE when King Mentuhotep, 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 Mentuhotep the second reunified the lower and upper parts of Egypt and just put the capital back into Thebes, allowing for the Middle Kingdom era to begin. Ah, what a time, and where our basic math operations begin. The simple addition or plus symbol is the first idea to enter a student's mathematical mind. The idea of combining something with something to get a new combination of a thing is the most basic starting point. The idea is that if you start with one thing, but get one other thing, you now have two things. This idea is as simple as using tally marks to count up. When you count from 1 to 10, you are adding 1 each time until you reach 10. So this idea starts at all and leads to its opposite, subtraction, using the subtraction or minus sign. Which being its opposite starts to take away a thing from a group of things. Instead of counting up, you count down. Instead of gaining a thing, you lose a thing. Both addition and subtraction have very humble, useful, and easy to understand beginnings. This is why we teach these operations so early. By the time you learn them, you have already experienced real world applications of these operations operations. When you are a baby and you get bored of a toy, another one will appear. When your plate is empty, spinach is added by one, two, or even three spoonfuls. When the number of crayons increases each time you put one back into the box. The number of people increasing because of your birthday party. When your toy is taken away. When you eat the spinach but spit it out because as a baby you have class. When people start to leave your party, most likely because of the spinach, they certainly lack class. The number of crayons eaten by your friend Kevin, the neighbor, you're sworn to be foes. Addition and subtraction are the beginning of everyone's math journey, but like most journeys, there is a long and expansive path ahead. After a while of using addition and subtraction, people began to notice patterns emerging. If you add three groups of something, you have three times as many things. Since we are still in ancient Egypt, you want to make an amazing bowl of food madamas. You would need fava beans. You start with zero, but need a hundred pods. So you grow them and you start to see multiplication all over. First, you know that each stock grows anywhere between 15 to 60 pods per bean stock. For simplicity, let's say you know that your fava beans grow 20 pods per bean stock. You would need some amount of fava bean sprouts to produce a hundred. 
Well, because of multiplication, we know you need five stocks. This idea stems from addition with you observing groups of numbers. If you count by 20 up to 100, you would count 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And if you wrote it out or could visualize it, you could see five groups of 20. So multiplication was born and in turn so was division. Division is the opposite of multiplication. A division is similar to subtraction. And like subtraction, you start to take away groups down to none or zero. The number of groups of fava beans you would see is five. These expressions of groups became the basis of the two new operations, multiplication and division. So math operations are the beginning and the base of the expansive world of math. The operations are based on real world applications, so it began as applied math, but it could just as easily be argued that it started as pure math. You may be asking yourself, but what about the equal sign that we use so much today? Well, in agent math, it would be implied, or written as, is equal to. Then in 1557, when Robert Record was fed up with writing is equal to, and stated, no two things can be more equal than the two parallel lines he used. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are where this video ends. But patterns exist past multiplication and division, and lead all the way to calculus, number theory, imaginary numbers, and dimensions.